Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp and today we're going to be discussing both static variables and how to create multiple forms. So let's get started. Oop, don't want that yet. Okay, so this is BTN enter, this is LBL output. So let's look at something we haven't you know, thought about or looked at before. So inside our button click event, what if we create a variable called int x is equal to zero? Every time you click the enter button, a new x will be created equal to zero, right? Well, do you think an error would happen if you click the enter button multiple times? You can't have more than one variable named x in memory. Well, the application's not crashing, so I guess it works. So I wonder why that is. Well, the reason is because every time a function, whether it's a click event or, or maybe it's a function that you created yourself, regardless, every time it's done executing, once you've left that function, any local variables created inside that function will automatically be discarded, destroyed, how everyone will look at it. But uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I don't know. I guess that depends. So let's go x plus equals 10. It really depends on what you want to do, but let's just uh, do something simple here. x.2 string. Okay, so let's print this guy. Click save. I click enter. Get 10. 10. 10. That's kind of boring. I mean, what if, what if I want this variable to keep going up by 10 every time I click the enter button? Well, this isn't going to work. It really isn't. Uh, because every time we're done with this enter click event handler, uh, the variable x is destroyed, it's discarded, it's no longer in memory, it's out of existence, poof. So how do we solve this problem? Well, what you can do is declare the variable as a static variable. And you can't do that inside of a function or anything like that. So I'm going to cut this and show you where you do declare them. You declare them up here at the top of your class, at class level basically. So I've shown you that you declare you typically declare constants up here, that's your best bet. You declare um, your global variables and then also your static variables. Okay, so in order to declare your static variable, just type out static first. X, whoops, sorry, the data type, int, then X. And you don't want to initialize it. I mean, I guess you can, but not in this, not in this example. The results would end up being unpredictable. So let's not do that. Let's just keep it as x and, well, now it should go up 10 every time we click it. Let's see if that works. 10, 20, 30, 40. Look at that, it's working. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So now we know how to keep a, a variable in memory. So how does this work? Well, basically, static variables, as soon as your application is loaded, this variable is all automatically created and it stays in memory until you close the application like I did. So if I run it again, it starts back at the 10 again. So not till you close the application is it completely out of memory. So that's the advantage or disadvantage, if you look at it that way, of static variables. So I'll leave it as that, and I guess that's all I'll do. Okay, multiple forms. All right, it's time to evolve. It's time to go on to that next level. We're probably tired of just using one form. Maybe we want multiple forms, different forms to do different things. How do we go about doing that? Well, as you can see here, we have the designer, form1.designer.csharp, and this guy here, which is just another thing, don't worry about it. But anyways, um, so this guy is form1.cs, which is basically a class. If you look up here, um, it says um, form1 is a class. We can create another class. So all you do is go up here, to your solution name, right click, click add, don't go to class, but go to Windows Form, because it will highlight it for you automatically. See, if you click class, it will highlight class for you automatically. Just go to Windows Form, and let's name it not Form 2. Let's go FRM, which is the shorthand for Form uh, Second. There we go. I'll click add, and there we go, there's our second form. So we can see form sharp and form sharp the designer. So the other designer for that, the code, and then designer for this. To see the code for that one, 
just click the code and now we can see the code and go between the designer and the code for our second form so let's create a label let's have it say something like I don't know let's have it say let's welcome to the whoops I spell that right to the second form give them a very positive uh, welcoming into this next form and let's create a simple close button as well so I'll throw in I don't know just close down there and BTN close up here and if I go back into this one let's figure out how to open this button I would also like to point out I'm gonna do this right now just to show you since um, that button that we created the out double click the close so this close button that we created and I actually didn't put the code in there whoops this dot close so notice how it's this button is private so it can only be seen within this class so that means if we go into our form one here if we wanted to call this one btn close we wouldn't have to worry about an error because they're all private they can't be seen elsewhere so see notice how I didn't get an error doing that but I want this to be btn open because it's going to open that other form and call this one open give me a moment I need a drink of water please Uh, thank you. Uh, capital O, whoops. And let's figure out how to open that other form. So I'll double click this, get in here, and now, since we're going to have to be accessing another class, since this other form is another class, don't worry, we're not going to be dealing with classes till way later, except for just a little bit here, but it's easy, don't worry. We're going to have to do what's called instantiating an object. So I'm not really going to go into detail of that now, because I want to save that for the classes episode. But uh, basically, all you do is type out the name of the form. So go form second. So basically, where you would normally type a data type, like single, double, uh, float, whatever, whatever, you just type in the name of the form, the object, which is form second. Then give that object a name. So just like you would give a variable name, let's call it second. And... Uh, I don't know how your teacher or boss does it. I'm used to naming in all my classes or whatever, however I do it, naming my objects starting with a capital letter. But you can do whatever you want. Then instead of equal to, then use the new keyword since we'll be instantiating a new object. Then see how form seconds already highlighted in IntelliSense. Just click tab. There we go. And that's it. Or there we go. I guess no semicolon there and whoops now we're gonna have to actually do something with this so down here oh whoops there we go pair of parentheses right there sorry about that okay so now how do you actually open it we created this object called second which is associated with our form second class so how do we actually open it when we open it just type out the name of the object that we created second dot then you can type in show and then either show or show dialog let me show you the show first because this is probably the one that you won't really be using so I click save then I'll open this up I'll click open and we get welcome to the second form but notice I can still go between the two forms typically you don't want to do that because it could really mess with certain things especially if you're doing something important I don't know you can close this, you can go back to this form. In order to disable the previous form, you'll use the show dialog instead. So let's see if I spelled that correctly, and I did. So show dialog is what I typically use. So if I click open, notice I can't go back to this form. I can only be on this form. So, oh yeah, and wiggling, this is a weird, look at that. If I keep wiggling, it, I guess that's the feature of Windows 7. Everything keeps going up and down. That's just really weird. But anyways, yeah, so close that and then you can go back to this form. So yeah, that's about what I wanted to show you.